Marijuana is considered an illegal drug in almost every country in the world, including the U.S. But one in three Americans have tried the drug, and 15 million have used it within the last month. Sensing the war against marijuana has failed, California is challenging the federal government on the issue. The state passed Prop 215, the Compassionate Use Act, allowing people to receive a doctor's recommendation for marijuana. Now, on November 2nd, Californians will decide whether to make it available to anyone over 21. Prop 19 asks voters to regulate cannabis like we do alcohol. The issue has been debated endlessly in the papers in the weeks leading up to the election. But to find out more about the argument against Prop 19, I spoke with veteran narcotics officer Chief Gary Pennis. No one in their right mind would deny someone smoking marijuana if you have stage 4 cancer. 98% of the people that we deal with in law enforcement, they readily admit it's to get high, it's to get a buzz, and it's an excuse to have a card. And Prop 215 is so poorly written that we rarely find anyone that really complies with the law that are truly collectives or collaboratives. It's legalized dope dealing. Whether you're an advocate for Prop 19 or you're uh, against it, um, it's poorly written. I think both sides can agree on that. Very similar with 215. It was poorly written, and it creates more confusion for the public, for law enforcement, for the courts, than it created any clarity. In my experiences since 215, since medical marijuana has come about, um, about 1 or 2% of the people are actually seeking marijuana because they have a problem that they feel it helps them with. Uh, I think it sets a, a precedent with younger people. Let's go back to seventh grade. Let's go back to sixth grade. Well, it's legal. It must be not that bad for you. It's probably okay. I think it's going to increase usage. Yes, I do. After talking with the chief, we met up with a local marijuana user and Moore Park College grad. Sean Contreras is a medical marijuana patient. He smokes regularly to help him with pain, anxiety, and depression. Uh, every day I smoke probably about three or four bowls at a time. Then I'll wait 10 minutes and see what happens, see if, uh, see how good it is. And then go from there, smoke more or less. Yeah, Prop 19 is the newest thing. I'm like, uh, kind of two-sided about the whole thing. Not sure if uh, I want it, but at the same time I do. Mainly because it gives you a larger area to grow in. Uh, it'll be decriminalized. I don't know about 21 and over. Um, I think maybe because they're thinking in terms of alcohol. People shouldn't be drinking until they're 21, but you know where that ends up. Same with marijuana, everybody does things early. If we do pass Prop 19, Marlboro, RJ Reynolds, all the tobacco guys, they're, they're on top of that one. Uh, if they have to start using chemicals like they do on tobacco just to get it to stay on the shelves longer, it's not really gonna work out like they want it to. It won't be medicinal, it'll just be another tobacco, you know, which won't be good for anybody. We drove down to Newport Beach to speak with Judge Jim Gray, a big-time advocate for Prop 19, and asked him what he thought the new law would accomplish. The first thing is that we as taxpayers will literally save hundreds of millions of dollars that now we are spending in a futile effort to eradicate marijuana as well as prosecute and incarcerate nonviolent uh, marijuana sellers. Number two, we could tax the silly stuff and generate revenue of, it's hard to say, but certainly hundreds of millions of dollars as well. So that's at least a billion, a billion and a half dollars of a budget shift. Number three, though, is the real reason, because it trumps the first two. And that would be, it will make marijuana less available for children than it is today. And we've already discussed it's easier for people under 21 to get marijuana than it is alcohol, because the people that are selling the marijuana don't ask for ID. Critics of Prop 19 contend that there would be sort of what you might call a liquor cabinet effect. If you have marijuana in the house, 
then it will be more available to children. There, there's no panacea here. Uh, I believe deeply, and based upon my experience as a trial court judge and arrest, mm -hmm. that we couldn't do it worse if we tried. Uh, marijuana still is the largest cash crop in California. That implies that somebody is using it. That means it's already in their households. Gray also had concerns about big tobacco, but for a different reason. I do not want anybody to be able to advertise this. I do not want it to be glamorized. I do not want it to be on television or put up jingles. Uh, come and buy Gray's Kick uh, heroin. You know, it's, it's on special today. It's a good brand. Uh, you know, we can get six hits for the price of five. No. The answer to that is categorically not. I want to make it as unglamorous as I can, and uh, that's a concern to me. All right, well, thank you very much for your time. Really okay, you're welcome. We met up with Sean again at a local dispensary. He wanted to show us how he gets his medication. And then what I do is when I come in, I have to bring my original prescription documents and my ID. I have to give that to them. For first-time patients, they'll give you this paperwork that you have to fill out. They also have to verify you, so they're going to call the doctor and verify that you are currently a patient and that you're in good standing and you're okay. And then they give me my stuff back and then I go inside. And this is where they keep everything? Yes. This is the main room, the good room. I have to sign in. And so this, these are all the different kinds? If you look at the front. All the they, different they, kinds, we have them all labeled on what kind of strain it is. So how much is an ounce? I mean, what does an ounce look like? That's Mama's OG, Mama's OG. Yeah, Mama's OG. Mama's OG. That is really dense too. Oh, wow. It's got all these like crystals on it. Yeah. Yeah, it's with 28 so grams. 28.5. Trade, yeah. Trade point 0.5. So that's an ounce of marijuana. Right. Yeah, okay. After we left the dispensary, Sean told me how marijuana had helped him with alcoholism. Uh, it helps me have no desire for alcohol whatsoever, so. And since it's been almost 10 months now of not having a drink, I kind of feel like I don't want to have a drink at all, ever. But should anyone over 21 be allowed to have weed? There are good arguments on both sides of the Prop 19 debate, but tomorrow, your vote will decide what happens.